Learning means acquiring knowledge. While memory involves encoding the knowledge which is acquired, storing it and retrieving it when needed. Memory is classified as a working memory, short term memory and a long term memory. So before going into the types of memory, let us see little bit fundamentals so that we understand little bit about learning as well. So as I said, memory is classified as working memory, short term memory and long term memory. See basically the distinction between these types of memory is uh, based on the time for which any information can be stored and as the term indicates a long term memory means uh, that information can be stored uh, for very long maybe for years as well. While working memory and short term memory are uh, kind of taken uh, similar to each other where a short term memory is uh, where we can keep the information for uh, some time and maintain it uh, there. So, suppose uh, we are acquiring new information, we can keep it in short term memory and uh, the long term memory which has been stored, we can even retrieve some information from the long term memory and keep it in short term memory for some time. And the working memory is basically a type of short term memory where we are using the short term memory and uh, manipulating it to fulfill some task. For example, we have to solve an equation. For that, we need to retrieve some information from the long term memory, keep it in short term memory and utilize that short term memory along with the task in hand to solve the task. So that is the main distinction between the different types of memory. By the way, how do we actually learn? See, we learn anything uh, that is acquire knowledge about anything by mainly three pathways. That is visual pathway, for example, seeing anything new. Then uh, auditory pathway, for example, listening to podcasts, uh, talking with other people. And uh, somatic information, that is by means of touching anything. And uh, maybe walking on a new road and feeling the new road. That is also a kind of new information. But uh, as you might have guessed, it's not that all these three different types of acquiring uh, information work uh, in isolated manner, generally we are surrounded by all types of information and we are acquiring knowledge by multiple means. Now when we acquire new information, this information passes to three polymodal association areas. So there is the main sensory area for the way of acquiring knowledge. For example, for vision it will be visual cortex. And then there are the association areas. So basically the information is passing to three polymodal association areas and these areas are prefrontal cortex, limbic system and parieto-occipito-temporal cortices. Now these areas are very important for synthesis of acquired information. And by synthesis here we mean that we are seeing the new information along with any prior information which is stored in our long term memory. For example, suppose uh, there is a new information, uh, suppose you are looking at a colosseum where gladiators used to fight. Now you are acquiring new information. Now suppose there is another person who has already read a great deal about Rome and has some parts of it is stored in his memory already. The synthesis of new information which will occur in these two people, one who has already read and there is another person who is not well read and he is just seeing it for the first time. The synthesis of information is different in these two people because this person with already some prior knowledge will draw in the existing information from his memory, what is known as retrieval of memory and synthesis of newly acquired information with existing information will take place. But what about the first person? Is his brain blank? No, it's not like that. See, this person has some information about some other aspects, maybe the size of the buildings, the types of the buildings, and he will retrieve that kind of information, anything associated with the new information, and his synthesis of uh, new information will take place in that particular context. Okay, with this basics about uh, learning and memory, let's Try to see the different types of memory. Memory as I told before it is working memory, short term memory and long term memory and I also told the distinction between these two different types of memory. Now the types of memory is further divided into different types based on the type of information. 
that is the different types of learning which are happening whether it is a skill whether it is a factual knowledge and if it is a skill then what kind of skill it is so based on whether conscious awareness is involved or not memory is broadly classified into implicit memory and explicit memory implicit memory is also known as non declarative memory that is a memory which cannot be recalled consciously and it is very difficult to declare it verbally so this is for basically skills and procedures which we have long learned for example suppose uh, you have already acquired the skill of cycling right so now after years if somebody asks you how you cycle explain it it will be very difficult to do it you will better write it and show it rather than explaining each and every word of it on the other hand explicit memory is also known as declarative memory and it is for factual knowledge of peoples and places and meaning of things and um, to add in that cycling example i will say that when we are learning about cycling then knowing about the factual knowledge about cycling how to step how to move your uh, leg that is all explicit memory while we are learning but after years when the skill has been learned then it goes into implicit memory so basically explicit memory is recalled by conscious effort so we have to deliberately think about the phenomena and be conscious about it so that is explicit memory now these broad categories of implicit memory and explicit memory are further classified into different types so implicit memory is classified into priming then uh, procedural skills and habits and uh, then there is associative learning which is acquired by classical and operant conditioning and finally there is non associative learning acquired by habituation and sensitization so implicit memory four types priming procedural skills and habits then uh, the information acquired by associative learning goes as implicit uh, memory and the information acquired by non associative learning like in habituation and sensitization also goes into implicit learning on the other hand for explicit memory we have two types one is episodic uh, memory and semantic memory so let us see what are these different types of uh, information and memory and uh, where they are actually stored so priming is basically recall of information based on a cue for example recall of words starting with a particular letter this type of information is stored in neocortex on the other hand procedural skills and habits like habit of sitting in a certain position in a certain way these are stored in basal ganglia in striatum then associative learning that is a learning which happens when there is a relationship between two different stimulus as in classical conditioning or relationship between stimulus and response as in operant conditioning again are stored in different areas based on response to the stimulus or action involved if the responses have an emotional component then the storage is occurring in amygdala if the response is involuntary response like in uh, salivary secretion in response to bell the classical example which we we see for classical conditioning these are stored in other areas of limbic system and if the response involves the skeletal muscle as a pressing a lever provides a food that is uh, what we see in operant conditioning then they are stored in cerebellum then the next one is non associative learning non associative learning which involves habituation that is a decrease in response to repeated non noxious stimulus and sensitization that is increased response to non noxious stimulus after application of a noxious stimulus these are basically reflex responses and are stored in reflex pathways in sensory and motor system fine now let's see the types of explicit memory explicit memories of two types we said episodic and semantic so what do these words means semantic knowledge actually is a knowledge of objects facts and concepts the meaning of words what do the words actually mean so that is semantic knowledge so basically it is memory for facts on the other hand episodic memory is for the episodes as the term indicates so episode means for events and personal experience 
so the term itself will tell you about the episodic memory so for example if there is a party then uh, what exactly happened in the party in what sequence so that is an episode now both of these types of memory are stored in distributed fashion in neocortex and this happens via medial temporal lobe there is hippocampus in medial temporal lobe so information goes via polymodal association areas which we discussed in the beginning to the hippocampus and then again from the hippocampus back into the polymodal association areas which we had spoken so in different areas in the neocortex this memory is being stored i just give you an example suppose uh, you think about elephant then what comes in your mind well you think yes it is a large animal then uh, the color of the elephant is gray then how it looks like where it lives what it eats what kind of sound it makes now when we are thinking about elephant it's not that uh, the entire information of elephant is stored in one particular place actually the information is bracketed into different different categories for example the sound goes into a different area where it lives goes into a different area how it looks is stored in a different area however when we think about the name elephant because of the connections from here with the other areas of the neocortex we get holistic recall of the entire knowledge about the elephant similarly when we talk about uh, some other animal similar the sound of that animal will go into the bracket of the sound so there are various draws we can say like uh, that uh, which are storing different different kinds of information and when any particular information is uh, retrieved for example uh, we were talking about the name of the elephant but uh, suppose you hear about the sound coming from an elephant you are sitting in one room and uh, suddenly you hear that sound you will immediately recall about elephant so because these different informations are connected together by means of neurons you get a holistic recall of the entire information so in summary basically there is storage of category specific knowledge in the neocortex fine so in this video we basically learned about fundamentals of learning and memory and the types of learning and memory Well thanks for watching the video if you liked it do press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you